Greg, you like Apple products, right? Eh. <laughs> I know eh. I have a couple of them here and there, you know. Anyone that's listening to the show, they may say, you know, to themselves, wow, these guys really love their Apple products, right? And we said, even all the way back to that launch trailer, that original launch trailer that we uh, that we had up on uh, on the uh, podcast app and, and uh, you know, wherever you listen to podcasts, that we're both Apple guys. We love our Apple products. And the show was going to lean heavier towards Apple news and, and uh, the Apple ecosystem and stuff like that, right? But for everyone that's, else that's listening, what do we do for them? Right, we mix in some stuff here and there, some gaming news, some some other things. But uh, what do we do from them? You know, for those for those non Apple users, some of the stuff that we talk about is, you know, some pretty cool features, right? So, so we talk about some really cool things on this show, uh, syncing stuff to through iCloud. Uh, we talked about shared calendars uh, during that back to school episode, right? Which is a big deal for me. I, I really love my calendar, and. Uh, you know, just just a, a lot of cool stuff. So today, I kind of wanted this to be our first non-Apple episode, right? Even though we have some Apple news and stuff coming up and we're going to talk about uh, Apple, it's not going to be totally focused on Apple and what we do with, uh, with, the, uh, with the iOS and iPad OS and stuff like that. So um, what I'm thinking we're going to do is talk about some top features that we love with iOS, right? iOS, iPad OS, whatever, just the Apple uh, ecosystem. And then try to give some or recommend some alternatives to what some people can do outside of the Apple ecosystem, right? If, whether they're using uh, uh, Android or, or you know, whatever else. I know I always kind of get hung up on, on, on other operating systems. That's because we really don't, dabble outside of the apple ecosystem that much right so but there's a few things that we do that we know that there's ways to do it on other platforms right as as ios grows ipad os grows and android grows um they kind of the feature sets kind of are similar even though there's different ways to do it they're still very similar right you can do the same task it's just hidden in different menus and different ways to get to it uh, stuff like that. So that's what I thought we would talk about today is is ways to, to do some of our favorite features outside of Apple, right? And that, that way, maybe some of the non-Apple users uh, can take advantage of some of the cool stuff that we talk about. So what do you think about that, Greg? I think that sounds great if I could get my microphone to stay in the <laughs> right spot. But yeah, no, I think that'll be cool. Okay. All right. Sounds good. So whether you're an Apple fan, Android fan, Google, you know, LG, or even if you're on your old flip phone, like most grandpas are, this is Gadgets for Families, the tech show where you get two grandpas talking about tech. And this week, we're going to talk about something other than Apple for a change. All right. Also, stick around for the extended hours, the extended um, extra innings post-show, overtime, whatever we're going to call it going forward. Stick around for that. Well, Greg and I are going to explore some alternate versions of ourselves. <laughs> and we're going to answer the question, what would we be doing if Apple wasn't such a dominant player in the tech world? You know what I mean? The, the tech industry has still always been a thing in our lives, but Apple wasn't always at the center of it. So we're going to explore some alternate kind of a... Uh, uh, one of those time travel episodes from not time travel, you know, one of the uh, episodes on Star Trek where they end up in the past and they're trying not to change the future or something like that. So we're going to we're going to have one of those time travel episodes to uh, today in the post show. So stick around for that. Yeah, I'm excited for that. I got thinking about it. Parts of it were much easier than I expected it to be until right. it came down to the desktop slash laptop operating system then i have a little bit of a struggle so right. we'll talk about that in the post show so stick around yeah yeah that's going to be fun um so thanks to everybody that's, that's tuning in today we really appreciate you guys listening uh 
we always try to have a good show for you guys. You know, Greg and I, we, we try our best to give you a good show every week. And, and we really appreciate the folks that's, that's, uh, you know, listening in, that's liking, subscribing, sharing and all this, all of that. So let's keep that going, guys. We really appreciate it. Uh, and as always, jump in those comment sections and let us know your opinion on, on some of the stuff we talk about. We really appreciate it. All right, Greg, let's do some catch up real quick, uh, before we get to our main topic. So the other day I got up to uh to go to a market i was going to the zoo that day it was one of the, the ones where i was uh, set up in the lake plaza so i got up to get ready and stuff and i walked out to the garage and the garage was wide open so i'm thinking to myself like did i kind of get up and half you know i'm half awake half sleep still and i instead of turning off the light i hit the button to open the garage and uh I was like, you know, what's going on? So it bothered me all day. I loaded up the truck. I went in and, and uh, uh, looked around and stuff because, you know, I've had two two episodes before where my garage opened when I wasn't home and a lot of my tools disappeared and everything. So I was really worried the whole day. Uh, but, you know, I had to rush off to work and, and um, continue with my day. So w- when I got back that night, I checked the security cameras and I was like, well, you know, let me make sure someone didn't come into the garage or someone used, uh, and I, I really kind of foolproof that I, you can't use one of those universal, uh, uh, remote things to open my garage. Like that was, I remember when I installed this thing, I told you that was my biggest fear was that, um, you know, someone would come through and, and hit a, a, a clicker that they got from Amazon or, or some site and, and open a garage. No, this is like, it kind of bypasses all of that. All of that is disabled. Like the traditional garage door opener is not the way that I open my garage. So, um, so I look back at the camera and sure enough at two thirty three AM, the garage door just opens up no activity until maybe about six that morning where two, two very large stray dogs ran by the garage looking you know they were being nosy and they run off and they go down the street and stuff like that and then no activity again until i got up uh uh, and started loading up my truck so thankfully nothing was taken i I see you have uh uh, one of your questions here nothing was taken and um as for what was the cause i spent the next week trying to figure out what was going on with it and uh nothing nothing i um uh, look back at the history, uh, uh, the open and closing. It doesn't say which device it initiated from. Cause I thought, well, maybe my son has access now to home kit. He doesn't, it's just me and, 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 and my wife. Uh, it doesn't show you which device the open command, um, uh, uh, came from, but I, I just couldn't figure it out. It, it really, it was really bumming me out. So anyway, long story short, I, I fast forward to the next week and this is not the controller I'm using, but I'm playing the game. So I'm holding the controller like this and my hands are down in my lap and I'm just uh, banging away at the game. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm doing some kind of mission or something and I get a notification on my phone that the front door just unlocked. So I'm like, wait, what's going on? Like no one's here. So I didn't realize that when I have my, the the way I, my wrist is orientated when I'm playing a game is face down. And with it being on my lap, I'm triggering home kit commands from my watch. <laughs> and, and I open the garage up. So uh. I, I, I literally hit myself like, so I'm looking down and it's full. Like home kit is open. It's on the front door lock and I'm unlocking it. So as I go through my home kit, the garage is the first one on the list. And that's what happened. I'm sitting there playing it wrist on my, on my, on my thigh. And it, it opened the garage up and I didn't realize it. I didn't get the notification, but I did catch it the other night when I opened the front door up and that's what was going on. So I accidentally opened the garage up that night and and yeah. (laughs) And now you also know that Jason's playing video games at two 30 in the morning. Right, right. I'm up at two thirty playing playing games and and uh, yeah, when I when I could be doing sleeping, actually I should be sleeping, but 
Yep, so that was the cause of it. I have to be careful. I actually went through, except for this watch face, and removed HomeKit, the HomeKit button from uh from all of those uh from all of those watch faces. The complication from all of those watch faces. So yeah. That is a, a mystery solved and and um yeah, just kind of make myself safer. I'm a, I'm aware that I'm inadvertently triggering uh and probably all kinds of lights and, and everything else, but yeah, the front door really scared me. Uh, you know, to get that uh, you know, notification that the front door just unlocked and it's it's you know twelve at night or something like yeah, that's pretty scary. So, yeah, I like to so I've got um home the complication on the complications widget underneath right. my, you know you flip up and then you can go down and so first i've got weather and then i've got a complications widget and it's got home there that's how i get into it i don't have anything that i activate but i do check the temperature from the home pod minis when i'm out right. and about and that's how how twice in the last three days we've managed to leave with the ac turned off and okay. uh come back hours later and it's 90 degrees in the in the trailer so that's been loads of fun yeah so yeah well yeah i i think i'm gonna test that out too i think that'll probably be a better spot for it but i just i feel safer now and just more <laughs> aware too of how i'm holding my wrists and stuff it it, it just made me more conscious of, of me yeah. accidentally triggering stuff like that so but yeah, yeah. So that was that was a mystery for the week that that got resolved. So pretty scary though, because I was I couldn't figure out how that garage door was opening, and it turns yeah, out it was me. Who hacked into my system, right? And is right. What are they planning? So yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. What about you, Greg? What do you got going on? Not a whole lot. Still doing a little bit of settle in. I think that you know we're just about into my daughter getting onto her regular schedule. So I think okay. her first seven days on starts next week after the holiday. So we'll we'll see how this seven days on, seven days off is going to go. Um, but a couple of things decided. So I don't know how many years ago. I think it was like 2018 or whatever it was, even 2017 it might have been. We bought a new mattress for the RV, the first RV we had. Right. And so uh, that one was six years old a mattress and it wasn't one of these you know it wasn't a high end it was something off of amazon it was great for the rv when you're only in it right you know a couple of weeks like, at a time yeah, yeah yeah but then the year we spent 70 nights in this one the first year we bought this and now or we've been in this thing since april right i just decided we needed to sleep better so bought a new mattress um bought one that's designed for bigger peeps Yep. Um, so, and I couldn't believe how expensive it was to go there. Even the same mattress we bought six years ago or whatever it was, was almost twice as expensive as what it was back then. So, so yeah, yeah. bought a new mattress, sleeping better, but I think we, and we wanted to do a new mattress in this one. It's a queen. We think we want a king. We thought we probably wanted a king, but like I had told you, I think at one point, right? If you get the king, there's a little bit less room in the bedroom to walk around and that kind of stuff in models that will allow a king. So we thought it'd be nice if the mattress solved the problem and the queen would be sufficient because then we'd get a little more room. Yeah, no, I think we still need a king. So <laughs> better right. sleep because I'm not worried about, you know, making sure that I'm sleeping in my groove. Right. Because when you're a big guy like me, you create a groove right, in a mattress. Right. So so that's why we actually paid extra to get this one that's supposed to be designed for bigger folks. And they've got the 120-night sleep test. So if we want to return it in the next couple of months, we could in theory. And then it's got a 10-year okay. warranty. So, But, man, mattresses are crazy expensive. So, yeah. 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 And uh, I think that's a purchase that we're, we're looking at. Uh, I'm going to try to push it as long as we can because it it's still fairly new. I, I believe it's only about four years old or so. I'm not really sure, but um, it's not too old. But, you know, Wendy's having some back problems and stuff, and she's getting up with some aches and pains, and I'm like, okay, yep. it's probably the mattress. Yeah, that's when I decided when I was starting to um, – if I strained my back at all during the day and then tried to sleep at night, it was just a – 
a no go. So, right. uh, and then the other problem that we've had. So it's been so warm here. I mean, it's been warmer here temperature wise than it has been in Houston. I mean, mm-hmm. it was hitting 109 degrees. And so when you're trying to keep a RV cool, that's already struggling to be cool. You don't want to cook inside, but then it's yeah. 110 degrees outside. So you don't want to cook outside. So what do you do? You go out to eat. And so, yep. you know, we've had the kids a lot and, you know, celebrating first day of school and some of those kinds of things. So we've just been eating out way too much. So bought a right. new griddle, bought a Blackstone. Um, it's actually the brand that, um, a lot of the RV manufacturers are putting in their rigs when they have like a little outdoor kitchen. Okay. They're putting these in. So we bought one, not a huge one. Um, you know, nothing super fancy, but, uh, so I've been trying to cook on that. And what I've realized is I like the look of burgers when they've got the lines in them and stuff like that. But the griddle is just so much more versatile because yeah. I can do everything I could on the grill on the griddle. So, so yeah, yeah. so I've been cooking out on that the last few days. So been okay. been enjoying that. And we're starting to have conversations about planning for the new home, not buying right. the new home yet, but plans around how we think we're going to do it can we what are we looking for and still probably targeting first of the year to to get into our new home so that's about it still swimming still uh biking had to ford a river the other day so it rained so hard down here because again i live in a desert so when it rains Mm -hmm. hard um so i thought oh it should be fine and uh (laughs) there's this over by where i ride a lot there's a there's a riverbed but it's Sometimes when it rains, it'll just have puddles, but yeah. you can still cross it. No big deal. Yeah, you know, we get over there and it's actually running water for the first time I've ever seen it that way. Running mm. water. Um, and so the main place you cross, you couldn't cross. So I went over to another place that I knew and ended up carrying my bike and wrapping through some jumping from rock to rock with the 55 pound bike on my shoulders. It was exhausting. So by the time yeah. I got across... <laughs> I didn't really want to ride a ton more, so I did a loop. And then when I came back to that place, I decided, you know what? I'm just walking straight across the river. And, I mean, right. it went up to my above my ankles, but it didn't get the battery on the bike, which was the important thing. I just walked across because I was done and, and then take the shoes off before you get in the car. So that was fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. mini mini triathlon, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. So. All right, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, and uh, the griddle too is cool. Like I say, Blackstone has been—they've been really pushing, man. And when when mm-hmm. I see, um, even some of like my my, um, uh, you know, our, our vendor friends, our fellow small uh small businesses and stuff like that that focus on cooking, whether it's you know tacos or chicken and stuff, it seems like more and more people are default into these Blackstone grills. So, yeah. um, some people I hear that you know it's a bit overpriced for what you actually get. But uh, we talked about some of the specs and stuff on yours and, and it seems like you got a, yeah. a pretty good value on, on the, the unit that you chose. So. Well, I've got to get rid of the, I've still got my old grill at my daughter's place and we're going to throw that out cause it's just worn out. And then I'll figure out what I'm going to get her and teach her how to use it. Cause I think on her seven days off, she's going to need to learn to cook outside a little bit because that's right. the best way to cook. I mean, cooking outside, is by far the best. I mean, my dream is to own a piece of property that I can put a giant RV on Mm -hmm. and then have an amazing outdoor kitchen with the stone fireplace and the smoker and the pizza oven and the grill and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. So that, that would be part of my dream. So we'll get her something else. We'll figure out what we're going to get her. Maybe one of the smaller black stones, you know, that might have to be like a Christmas present or something for her. But, um, so I've got the Traeger tailgater, which is a super a smaller s- smoker. Mm-hmm. And then I've got this griddle, and then I've got a two burner camp chef um, that just sits on a table. So I sh- I should have, in theory, no reason to not be cooking outside. I should be able to do it all. So. Yeah, and no reason to be eating out. That's the most important thing. Yeah, yeah, because it's not just the price, right? I mean, it's also it's just not healthy because yeah. we've been going to a couple of buffets and stuff too because our kids once we taught them about buffets where they could pick whatever they wanted especially when it came to dessert um that's the only place they want to go so and i always yeah. overeat <laughs> yeah yeah I, I, so. that's what it's designed for that's what those yeah. places are designed for 
Yep. Okay. So current stuff. So September 9th is what Apple's targeting to do their announcement for the new iPhones, right? But we're thinking that there's going to be some more stuff along with that. Uh, we're thinking new watch, some new AirPods, maybe some new iPads. We're kind of, we're kind of thinking we're not sure because Apple has been known to have a second music kind of, you know, iPad, uh, iPod, even though they don't do anything big for their iPods. They usually have a second event in October, right, where they announce new things. So we're not sure if they're going to squeeze everything into this event, September 9th, or they're going to split out the iPads. But more news on the, on the iPad of why we're thinking we may hear something. But, uh, Greg, what do you think? Are you excited for the event? Yeah, I mean, so last night when I was putting in my stuff for the show today, I realized that Apple had actually dropped the invite. So for the right. 9th, it's their normal thing. Um, I didn't realize that September 9th is the day they launched the Apple Watch. So it's literally okay. the 10th anniversary of the Apple Watch, which is why we're, we've are we been talking about that Apple Watch X or whatever that they're potentially yeah. going to do this year. So um, that kind of makes sense. So um, iPad mini, my beloved iPad mini, which is less beloved at the moment, but um, the iPad mini stock is running low. Yeah. Um, which is generally a sign that there's a, a refresh coming. I haven't heard that about the ninth gen iPad. Um, so don't know if that's up because that's the other thing that would be up for a refresh. Mm -hmm. But um but yeah, I, I'm I'm excited. Um I'm excited for this event. Uh, you know, we've been talking about purchase plans and stuff. I know that I've got one Apple Watch. I'm not gonna end up with more than one. I'm just gonna get one and I'll be trading in my ultra. So I think that's how that's gonna play out. Um, Karen decided she doesn't need music while she swims. So then I'm, I'm just going to deal with that with the one I have right now. Cause 335 mm -hmm. bucks for trade in is just a lot to wear, you know, three or four hours a week. So, right. So I'll probably be trading that in, but yeah, I'm excited for that. We'll see what the iPad mini does. And then the phones, the rumor has it that all of the 16 series phones are going to get that capture button that we've okay. been talking about, the extra button. So I don't know about the action button, but definitely the capture button, which is supposed to be on the opposite side. So the same side as the power button, but down towards the bottom so that when you're holding the phone in landscape, it's right there. Right. So click, right. click, click. So, yeah. So I'm excited to see what that brings. And uh, yeah, should be good. 10 a.m. like normal. So Jason, it does mean if they follow the normal pattern, event on the 9th, Pre-orders on the 13th show up right. on doorstep on the 20th. So, yeah, yeah, it looks like I'll have some 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 gear just in time for the cruise this year. Hopefully, so. hopefully they don't they don't pull a, you know, this particular color is going to be coming later in the fall or something like that. But yeah, know. you know, then the other news which ties into the tip I threw in here is German said that the release candidates he's thinking they're going to drop tomorrow. So the final versions of iOS 18. Will drop tomorrow. They're already being flashed onto the phones in the factory to be shipped. Okay. Um, so if that's the case, then release candidates of all the public betas would come out tomorrow. Um, the tip is, if you want to install a beta, if you can't wait two or three more weeks, this is the one to install, right? I mean, it's right. going to be basically the same version. Apple has before had to release a second release candidate because there was something big enough. But yep, last minute, yep. Yeah. But if you're going to install the betas, you may want to. I was thinking about putting it on my phone so I could get the watch stuff. But since I'm pretty certain I'm going to get a watch, I think I'm going to hold off on the watch. Okay. And uh, put the new OS on and just get it on the new watch so that on it new all watch. feels brand new. So Yeah, you know, that's a good idea, too. I think I may do the same. Yeah, I, I think I'll, I think I'll do the same thing. So, and then depending yeah. on what other new features they announce with it, which probably won't be much, but um, yeah, I think I'll probably do the same when it when it comes to the watch. So, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll probably do my phone um, this week too. Yeah, I'm holding off on the phone just in case I decide I I'm upgrading. So right. I'll probably wait until the ninth and make my decision about upgrading my phone and then just put it on the new, just put it on the new phone. So, yeah. Okay. Now I haven't actually looked while you're, I know we're going to start jumping into the other topic, but I'm going to look at, um, have not looked to see, cause nobody wants my 15 pro max, right? 
Right. And I think I have figured out that I can um that I can record on my actual active phone. Oh, they don't of course they don't have the trade in values for the fifteen Pro Max up because it's the current gen. At least right. Apple doesn't. Uh iPhone fifteen Pro Max trade in value. Let's see if somebody else has it. So at least Apple doesn't. But um I just was curious to see how much I would get. So I'm guessing I'll probably get like 600 bucks trading value so. for this phone. So, yeah. which between that and 300 bucks for my watch is enough to pay for the new watch. So anyway. Yeah, I would, I would think so. 550 to, to 600 bucks. It seems like the, the right range. Yeah. I mean, right now the iPhone 6, 14 pro max can get up to $620. Yeah. So, and I've got, I'm not on the low end storage. So anyway, that was a sidebar, but yeah. yeah. So yeah, I'm excited. We'll see. I'm not going to flat. I don't think I'll do anything else with operating systems until, until after the event. So. All right. Well, today's topic, like I was saying earlier at the, at the top of the show, we're going to be talking about uh, alternative ways to get some of our favorite features done in, uh, in iOS outside of the Apple ecosystem, right? So if you are on Android and you hear us talk about things that we do on 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 um on our iOS devices on our iPhones or iPads or whatever, um there's definitely a way to do that on on your on your you know the platform that you're on just may not be the way that we say we do it, right? You may not follow the same steps, right? Because everything is still possible just hidden in different menus and, and uh, different options and things like that. So um, what I'm thinking, Greg, is we just pick out our three favorite features, right? And we'll just go through them real quick and, and we'll alternate. We'll round robin like we, like we usually do. And just, uh, you know, just list them off and we'll just talk them through like we usually do. So let's just jump right into it. My first one that I I chose, and it's one that we both use. Uh, you pay for way more storage than I do, but you understand the power of of iCloud and using cloud storage. And for me, the Files app, which I know catches a lot of heat, especially on the iPad, people just seem to to really hate it. But I mean, it's a basic file explorer app, and it works just fine. You know, they added on a few features and added the ability to be able to drag and drop uh, uh, files from the file app the files app into other applications and stuff on the phone and the iPad. So, um, yeah, that's what we use on, on, uh, iOS and, and, uh, and, and the Apple ecosystem is iCloud and the uh, files app. But, um, if you've been listening to the show, if you're one of my brothers, if you're Greg, if you're anybody, you always hear me preach about a NAS, right? And that's my network attached storage, which also, also offers, cloud storage and uh it's basically you own and manage your own personal cloud right here in your home so um nas again is network attached storage you basically take uh a hard drive you know some kind of external storage whether it be um you know uh flash drives or actual uh disk drives or solid state drives and you install them in a NAS like base station or something like that. And that has all of the processing power. It allows you to be able to serve files to devices in your home. It allows you to uh, do things like add VPNs and, and things like that. It's basically the computer component to the hard drive that gives it its smarts, right? And uh, you'll be able to access that outside. And a lot of them, especially the, the, the bigger companies, your Synologies, your QNAPs, uh, Western Digital, they have very powerful apps and, and pretty user friendly and, you know, good looking apps. Cause uh, me, I don't like ugly apps. <laughs> I don't like basic uh, uh, text, uh, uh, you know, splash screens and stuff like that. I like well uh, designed apps and uh, these companies really offer some well-designed apps with some really good features. You'll be able to access all of your files, pictures, uh, um, music, everything, outside of your home and not have to pay a monthly subscription service to uh, companies like Apple or Google or, or Microsoft or anything like that. So 
that's I'm kind of using a combination of both, right? I still have my iCloud. Uh, we use the iCloud for the company and for some personal stuff, pictures, photos, stuff like that. Uh, some files that I want to be able to access at all times. And then outside of that, the heavy lifting, the bulk of all of our personal data, uh, personal information, tax information and stuff like that, it's all stored on my uh, on my home NAS here. And uh, we access it through the QNAP app. And yeah, it gives me. Um, so with Apple, I pay for the. Uh, the the 200 gigabytes. Wow, I, I, I should check to see what I'm paying for. I don't know if it went up or down. So 200 gigabytes with iCloud and with um, my QNAP, I have 18 terabytes of, of free storage. Now, a lot of it is taken up, but I want to say I, I probably have about 13 terabytes of free space that I can use for anything and I can access it anywhere, anytime, uh, as long as there's not a storm in Houston and the power's off at the house. So, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, enough said about that. If you listen to any one of the episodes or again, I'm always hounding Greg about getting one. I'm always hounding my brothers about getting one. Uh, yep. Uh, a network attached storage is the way to go. Personal cloud storage. Yeah. I mean, we've talked about this, so I won't go into too much detail, but I just, I don't have, to me, that's just an added layer of complexity for me that I don't yeah. need. Yeah. Right. I mean, I'm already on the family plan. Um, I got to have a conversation with Dustin because he's the one that's consuming uh, <laughs> over over half of our total used oh, storage, wow. but we're still not at a single terabyte with everything, yeah. right? And so, and I'll talk about this a little later, but my business stuff goes elsewhere. So um, yeah. anyway, so yeah, I just, I, I totally agree with you. If I had that or if I wanted to run Plex, Right, or if I had all this media and stuff that I wanted to store and stuff like that, NAS yeah. would definitely be the way to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know you, uh, you don't have a need for it now. You know, even though I keep trying to figure out ways to squeeze that into your, into your, uh, you know, your tech environment. But you know, and it's the same with my brothers. I don't know why. And we have this conversation every few months on a regular basis. What can I do to do this? I'm trying to take care of this. What can you do? Well, you know, if you would have bought a NAS last year during Black Friday when I told you, we wouldn't be having this conversation now with both of my brothers, not just one. Both of them are constantly in a, okay, which one should I buy? Go through, do the research, find the most advanced one, the most full-featured set now. Uh, currently, I'll send it to them, and then a few months later, we're talking again, like, well, why didn't you buy the one that I sent you? Oh, because at the time, I couldn't do it. So, um, okay. So, Listen to Grandpa. Get a Nas. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I want to. The first one I pick. So I pick boring ones. Um, but uh, the first one is mail. So um, you know, I just mentioned that I'm a. Uh, I've got the Apple package, right? I've got all their stuff. I'm paying for their highest tier right. of their iCloud services, and with that, you can get custom email addresses. But I don't use Apple for any of my email stuff. So I do have an. Uh, iCloud ID, right? Or iCloud email address because you had to have that set up, but it's not my Apple ID. I don't use it for anything. I don't right. check that email box like ever. Um, maybe I should at some point, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so all of my personal email addresses are their Gmail. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's just, it just, that's, that's what it is. So, um, so yeah, I'm looking right now at my, uh, I opened up mail for probably the first time on this iPad and, um, yeah, I have no email. I have no junk email. I have no nothing in the, my iCloud email address, but anyway, right. so, um, so all of my personal stuff is Google and then, uh, all of my business stuff is through Microsoft and I'll talk, right. I want to talk Microsoft later. So, um, but then I don't even use the mail app. So, uh, oddly enough, I use Outlook on all of my devices, my phone, my, uh, MacBook, my iPad, it's all Outlook, um, for both personal and professional mm -hmm. email. They're all kind of mixed in depending on which device has which accounts and stuff like that. So, um, so I'm not using any of the Apple stuff at, 
drives me crazy when I click on a mail to link, especially on my Mac and it opens up the mail app, which I've not even configured. So right. actually I figured out how to thank you Google, but I figured out how to turn that off yesterday. So I'll have to see if it, next time I click on a mail to link, if it actually launches Outlook, cause that's fairly new, right? The ability to set default mail music, some of those kinds of things. It's only been in the last few years that Apple started opening up some of that stuff. Right, so, right. Yeah. Giving people the, the option to choose. Yeah. Yeah. All of my personal mail, again, is through Gmail. And then my professional stuff's all through Microsoft. So that's right. the tip. That's really platform agnostic because you can get to it through any browser, you know, any of those kinds of things. So. Yeah. Yeah. From, from any device, even if you have one of those refrigerators with the screen on it, yeah. It has a browser on it. You can you can access your mail there. So that's not even phone centric or device centric. It's as long as you have a browser, it can get to it. You can have a smart toaster and and be able to check your email and not have it tied to a specific ecosystem. Even though we're talking Gmail, the same can be applied with, you know, I use my Hotmail, which is an old Microsoft, um, you know, domain. Now it's it's Outlook now, but you know I can still access that Hotmail. Uh, um, you know, email domain. So, yeah, no email. I mean, you say you pick boring ones. Your your next one is actually one that's pretty high up on my list as far as apps that we use. You know, I can't talk enough about it. But, um, yeah, no, I'm I'm with you on the uh, on the mail. That's that's a pretty good pick. So my next one that I picked was, um, you know, we use the iPhone and we use iMessage and those are both very powerful, right? I mean, phone is kind of a phone, but iMessage has came a long way over the years, right? So much so that, you know, we're, we're trying to, you know, get Apple and Google and all of these other companies, WhatsApp and all of these other companies to kind of play nicely together so we can still maintain all of those features that we use on a daily basis in iMessage. So, but one of the, the, Things that I've found for many years have always been an alternative for me is my Google Voice and um, uh, sending and receiving messages from there, right? Uh, we talked before in the past about um, I've never been attached to a phone number, right? I've always just needed data, right? Because I use iMessage, uh, FaceTime, audio, FaceTime, uh, video, um, and I use Google Voice and uh, text messages and stuff through that. So I've never been attached to a phone uh, a phone number. As long as my my plan had data, I was okay with that. Don't even call me on my on my regular number. But if I think about it, I've been attached to this Google Voice number since the beginning. Since they announced Google Voice, this has been my my phone number and family uh, and stuff. They reached me there that I hadn't talked to in years. You know, cousins, distant family and stuff. They can always reach me on on that number. Cause that's been my number. So, uh, you know, I, I kind of see, uh, you know, I say I don't really need a number, but I do always have that, that Google voice number. So that's always been my go-to, uh, as an alternative to iMessage and, uh, the phone number is Google voice and, uh, uh, sending messages through, uh, through, uh, through Google like that. So, and they're regular text messages, even though they're, you know, they're driven through data, they don't go through, you know, the carrier's text messaging system that, you know, is carried over data, but it's still like a regular text message, right? You would yeah. uh, 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 text me through from your phone or your device, and I would receive it like a regular text message. Not as featureful as, as iMessage, you know, it is still, for the age that it is, it is still pretty basic as far as text messaging goes. And I know there's other apps to, to use, and I know people have moved on from uh from Google Voice to other applications and stuff, but as long as Google hosts it, as long as they support it, uh, I'm still going to use it, and that's a really good alternative to uh, to having uh, you know several different apps, and th and that's really what I try to avoid. Is is I know friends and family and stuff, uh, especially this younger generation. Um, I don't like having Snapchat to talk to two different friends. Uh, and then having one cousin and one family member on Google Voice and then having to have a family group chat with my in-laws on WhatsApp and then having to talk to everybody that I, I love and, and hold dear, uh, you know, on iMessage and stuff like that. So really to talk to people, 
to have a conversation during the day, you're using five different apps. And I really try to avoid doing that. I really don't like to do that. So if I can push everyone to either Google Voice or iMessage with the, that have an iPhone to iMessage, then I would rather do that. I don't want to have your Snapchats and WhatsApps and, you know, uh, uh, what is it, Duo and, and stuff like that with Google. Facebook Messenger is one that they use. And I don't have a Facebook. Uh, or Instagram messenger, you know, I don't have all of that. So, um, I, yeah. I, you know, no one can reach me on those. So these are all, uh, it's a good alternative. So look into that. If you don't have a Google voice number, it's as simple as just going through a regular setup. You put in your, your email address. If you already have a Gmail, then you probably already have a Google voice account. So, yeah. Um, yeah. When Pretty Dustin left, when Dustin left on his mission, we didn't want to lose his phone number, but we also didn't want to pay every right. single month for it. So we ported it into Google voice. It was like a right, one time man. $20 fee. And then I think he still has it set up on Google voice, but he got a different phone number when he came back. But I also have my business stuff is on a Google voice. My actual official phone number that nobody ever uses, which is fine by me is on right. there. And then, uh, I've also used it like when I want to list stuff for sale. Um, I use that yeah. number because it's not going to be associated with anything. So a lot of good uses for for Google Voice. Yeah, yeah. and good, good alternative. And I know we're saying, you know, iOS alternatives and just kind of going to Google and Android users are listening like, yeah, we, we use this all the time. No, this is for anyone. This is for yeah. um, uh, anyone, even if you're outside of Android, you'll still be able to use Google Voice. This is one of those things where... You can access this from a browser. If you had a browser on your toaster, you'll still be yep. able to access your Google voice and get your messages and stuff. So, yep. all right. And the next one, again, you said it was boring, but this is pretty high up on my list of, of apps yeah. that I love. <laughs> well, I mean, so my other one is calendar, right? And, I, yep. you know, if I think about this, this is how you get stuff done cross-platform. Um, yep. So we actually set up a new calendar. Oddly enough, that particular calendar for Kristen and the grandkids and Karen and I, so we knew what was going on with them. So I could know when my wife wasn't going to be around. Right. 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 That was a big thing. That one we actually set up via iCloud. But pretty much all of the other calendars, they are not Apple. So yeah. I see them on all my Apple devices. I add them to my Apple devices through Apple's built-in ad accounts, right? On the Mac, it's internet accounts. On on uh, your iOS devices, it's it's mail accounts and stuff like that. So it's all added that way, mm -hmm. but they're all Gmail for personal. They're all Microsoft for professional. <laughs> and then I see them all through either Outlook or Fantastical. So the only thing Apple right. is doing is providing the infrastructure underneath the skins, right? To make sure that I can get all of the accounts onto all of my devices. So if I ever yeah. did have to switch over you know, this is not a problem. All of those accounts are going to go anywhere that I need them to go. So, yeah, um, yeah I, there is one downside that's coming, um, which is some of these Apple intelligence features that are going to be built into the mail app, right? Like changing the tone right. of your mail, summarizing your email, some of those kinds of things. So I may have to give the mail app on one of the devices a try just to see. Um mm -hmm. Because I don't know that they're going to necessarily open all of that stuff up to APIs. Uh, if they did, it would be awesome if Microsoft would tie into them. Right. Um, but they're probably going to want to do their own stuff with their AI. So that might be the downside of all of this. But, uh, but yeah, uh, Fantastical I love on the iOS devices. I actually don't use Fantastical on my Mac because I usually don't pull up my Right. Um, personal calendars on my Mac. So I just use the built-in calendar and Outlook there. So yeah, calendar, definitely some options. And I'm, I'm other than one calendar, really, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, using iCloud calendars at all. And it was just easier to use that iCloud calendar. And actually we already had it. It was my wife and I in there and right. we weren't using it for anything. So it was just really easy to add Kristen and say, Hey, here, use this one. So, okay. All right, cool. So this is kind of a sidebar. I, I did have a question earlier, and this kind of applies to the mail too. Uh, and you kind of answered it here with, when you talked about your Mac. But I was going to ask with the mail, do you have all mailboxes all the time on all of your devices? Or do you find yourself having certain mailboxes and, and uh, 
I hear is the same with with your calendars. Certain mailboxes on your iPhone that you check, uh, and then certain ones on your iPad that you just don't want to bother with on your iPad, and you you know you get mail messages and stuff. Or do you have it uniform across all of your devices? Mostly uniform. Uh, I did okay. last week go through and remove almost everything on the iPad Mini except for you know like I talked about right that I needed to just turn it into a reading device and yeah so I did remove a bunch of stuff there I've got like my company customer service account some ancillary company accounts that only show up on my Mac but I've got my core personal and core company accounts on all three of these devices I'm looking at my phone my iPad and my my Mac so it's kind of a blend of the two okay all right so I, it didn't used to be like that with me i used to have everything uniform just everything all the time um but when i got this ipad i noticed i didn't want to be bother with certain email accounts you know what i mean i don't know yeah. what it was i i just like eh, i'm not gonna set it up or I, i'm not even gonna I, I have it on my phone i only need to check that on my phone when i'm when i'm out or whatever and uh yeah, yeah, I don't know. I just just never set them up, so they're they're totally different now. And then uh, on this MacBook that I was using temporarily, nothing's on there aside from my iCloud, which, yeah. like you, was always empty. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at my iPad right now. I've got four total email addresses set up on it. One of them is my primary personal. One of them is my primary work. And then I've got two secondary personal. One of them's a holdover from back in the MSN days. Right. right. I mean, one of them's that used to be my thing before I got Gmail. Um, so that one doesn't get hardly any mail. And the other one I used, the other one was an email address that I created when I was uh, first going independent. First time I got laid off, right. that I wanted to use for uh, applying for jobs and on resumes and um, that kind of stuff. And so I've carried it over to just a few things. So. Yeah, I've only got, it's not like I've got 10 or 12. On my Mac, I think I've got like 8 or 10, just because I've got different email addresses set up for the company for different purposes, just so that my my primary email for the company doesn't get spammed with everything. Right, so. right. All right, that makes sense. All right, so next on my list is, you, you guys hear me talk about HomeKit and my smart devices and, and things like that. Um, an alternative for that is actually a pretty decent alternative because I still kind of use a combination of it. And that's the, uh, Alexa app. Well, Alexa in general, right? The smart home assistant. I have a bunch of echo dots. I have an echo show. Uh, I have some, um, uh, and one Alexa, one, one of the, the taller Alexa speakers all throughout my home. Uh, even out in the uh, in the workshop in the back. And of course, to control all of those and configure them, you use the Alexa app, which it is, a, is a HomeKit alternative. It actually does a whole lot more. Um, in, in most people's opinion, they would say, and I, and I would say too, the Alexa app does a whole lot more than HomeKit, than the uh, built-in HomeKit app. Uh, it just doesn't do it well. So, <laughs> so although you can do things like control music and play music in different devices and set up zones and uh, uh, set up different things, it, it does all of that. Um, I just think that most people, if you're using that app as your main app, um, I think if you started using HomeKit, it probably would blow your mind at how well that, that uh, these smart home devices work in HomeKit. Greg, I know you're having some issues with your security cameras and, and home kit and stuff like that. And don't get me wrong. I have my, I have my own problems that I deal with, with home kit too. Home kit is not perfect by, by no means it's not perfect. Uh, I have to go in the attic, uh, later this evening to, to deal with the home kit relay that's up controlling my garage, my shop lights in the garage, because I need more lighting out there. And that, and that relay is fell off of the network for some reason. So, it has its own problems, but the Alexa app, I would say, is a decent alternative to HomeKit. And uh, there's some features that I really love, and and uh, there's some, again, that, that I just don't care for. They just don't work as well. But 
Um, some of the things that I really love that that I consider a plus for using the Alexa app is setting up these routines. Now, I know you can you can set routines up in in uh, HomeKit, right? You can schedule lights to turn on and off at a certain time. You can have your landscape lights turn off and on. But the way the Alexa app handles it, man, you can really break it down and get these granular settings to where you can have routines that do different functions, right? And what I mean by that is like, yes, you can have your uh, your your lights turn on and off in the in the HomeKit app, but let me uh, just give you an example of one of my my daughters and my favorite uh, uh, routines that we have is every Christmas time we have the 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 Christmas lights. You know, we put up the tree and we have the lights around the village and stuff. And the routine in the Alexa app allows the Christmas tree to to, to turn on. It'll turn on the lights around the Christmas village and stuff. There's a little tiny Christmas tree in the Christmas village with its own set of lights that turns on. And the announcement in the living room over the loudspeaker comes on and it says, Merry Christmas, you filthy animals. And it does that every, uh, if you remember that line from Home Alone, that was a, a, a big line. And it always stuck with me growing up. So it just yells out, Merry Christmas, you filthy animals. And it turns on the lights and stuff. And my, me and my daughter, we get a laugh out of it every uh uh, every day that we're in the living room when that when that routine runs. So you can do stuff like that. You can turn on the sprinklers and have Alexa say, hey, I just turned the sprinklers on and turn on the room light. And also, I just locked the door and open the garage and all of that. And it'll run all of these uh, these uh, they call them routines in the uh, uh, Alexa app. But I believe they're called scenes in the uh, in home kit, but, which I don't use at all. So that's one of the things that it does better. If Apple were to announce that feature, I'm pretty sure it would just blow the Alexa app out of the water, but they hadn't announced it yet. So uh, we're waiting for it. Uh, custom responses uh, is another cool thing, right? You you ask Alexa to, uh, and I'm, I apologize to anyone if I'm setting off your, your devices, but you ask the assistant to do a certain feature or something like that. And it gives you that generic response like, okay, or I, I did this, but you can actually set it to respond to you differently. Right. So, uh, again, I always use these personal, uh, uh, things that we use. And, uh, when they're in the, uh, the bathroom taking a shower, we all like to listen to music and stuff. We all have our playlists and stuff. Well, when my daughter says, Alexa, turn off the music, instead of it just saying, okay, I turn off the music. I said it to remind her, did you put on deodorant? Or did you wash your face or something like that? It has a, a set of different responses. So when she says, turn off the music, it reminds her to, uh, you know, to put on her deodorant and stuff, right. Uh, you know, like that. So, um, so yeah, you can set this, these custom responses out, uh, up to, uh, to say certain things. And, uh, that's another big deal that I love. And that's again, pretty cool. I, yeah, that's, pretty yeah cool. That, that's, uh, uh I, I love that. I love that about it. And again, if Apple were to do it, you know, Greg, that they would do it better. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? They just had uh, uh they just had and you can probably do a lot of this stuff through shortcuts and that kind of stuff, but it's it's right, right. more in depth to get it there yeah, uh, you sent me a couple of articles about setting up different things because my last one uh you sent me an article about how to do that, and I just hadn't got around to configuring it and and to seeing if it'll work but uh, you heard me say it before, if you watched our short, the main reason why I have all of these Alexa devices is so I can walk in a room and say computer lights, computer, lower the temperature, computer, just like I'm on a starship for the Federation. I can address it as computer and it'll it'll answer whatever question that I have. And I love that. So no. as soon as Apple adds that, I'm taking all of these things and putting them in a dumpster and I'm buying HomePods. <laughs> now. You you know that with iOS 18 you can do that right with the shortcuts though right not with uh not just change the uh, the, the the actual wake word it's an right? accessibility and you create a vocal shortcut so it's not a shortcut as in shortcut shortcut but it's a a vocal shortcut it's a new accessibility setting in iOS 18 okay huh. And that works on the home pods too, or just the phone? Uh, I don't know. I'll drop you this article. You can take okay. a look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll I'll try to figure it out. But you know, once we get it, and you know, another sidebar. It, it is it is when we do this to to this generation too. We just make things so easy for them. 
I don't think my kids have flipped a switch. <laughs> like, I, you know, I say that jokingly, but, you know, imagine being a kid just growing up, you know, like Wesley Crusher on the Enterprise. And he walks in a room and it's dark. He wouldn't know to go to flip a switch. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's just crazy. It's it's crazy. Like, they've grown up with having uh, Alexa and, and walking into a room and having a computer answer questions or give them notifications and stuff that, you know, they just won't know what it's like having to find a book or a magazine to find an answer, you know, like we grew up. Yeah. Uh, anyway, that's 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 all. That's technology. It just moves forward anyway. But yeah, these kids, <laughs> you know, eating dinner in the dining room or something, and they just they probably don't even know what a dining room light switch is. It's so crazy. <laughs> so, but yeah, HomeKit, uh, uh, this Alexa app, and this again is cross platform, uh, Android, uh, Google phones, uh, 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 all of that, all of that, and its own standalone devices as well as Amazon's devices that they have. So yeah, you can, you can uh, pretty much build a smart home outside of this. And even if you don't want to deal with Amazon, I know people have their gripes about it. There's uh Casista and uh, no Caseta. And uh, even if you have a huge ecosystem that has its own, where you can control other devices outside of the, uh, the Hue ecosystem and stuff. So you can pretty much build a smart home outside of iOS and home kit. Um, with uh, plenty of other platforms. Yeah. Yeah, now, yeah, check out that article I sent you. I'll be interested to see, see yeah, how that yeah. plays out. So, Check it out. Uh, okay, so my last one is all of my professional stuff. So um, a lot of folks, especially in the tech industry, starting small businesses and stuff, they're going to go with Google. Right, yeah. the Gmail suite of of business services, and even at my last big job, and I was working for DocuSign, so we had switched right to. Mm -hmm. So that's a big tech company switched to Google suite of stuff, and um, no, it's just not my, yeah, just not my cup of tea. And so I am on Microsoft as long as I don't have to use Windows. There's the thing, I don't want to have to use Windows. Right. And so part of this is because back when you and I were working at Stewart, we were working so much with the exchange team, right? Yeah. I did all the Microsoft admin for email and IDs and storage and all that kind of stuff that um, I learned how to do all of that kind of stuff. So I can yeah. administer almost all of this stuff. I've got all these extra email addresses set up. I've got routing rules set up. I've got storage, you know, policies and all of that kind of stuff. I just, I know how to do it all yeah. in the Microsoft world. So that also means that I use OneDrive, which is a great alternative to the Files app and you can get to it through the Files app and it syncs up just fine and yeah. all of those kinds of things. So, yeah, so I am uh, absolutely um, in on the Microsoft stuff. And the other, one of the other uh one of the other reasons that this comes about is there's just an assumption that the Google stuff is going to be cheaper because Gmail is free, right? right? But by the time I got into wanting to be able to use a custom domain, right, and route all of my custom domain stuff from my host provider, right, into Microsoft, if you were going to do that in Gmail, by the time you get all of those services and stuff in, the costs were pretty much the same. There right. just really wasn't that much of a of a benefit to, from a cost perspective to go through Google. So, uh, yeah, I, I have all of that stuff. Um, I know some people struggle with their, uh, like word Excel and that kind of stuff on iOS. And yes, there are some restrictions and yes, on Mac, it doesn't work quite as well as it did when I was on a windows computer and that kind of stuff, but for everything I need for it, it works just fine. And the workarounds are, are very, very minor and I'm just comfortable that I know what I'm doing there. So it's similar to me not wanting to do a NAS. The biggest reason I don't want to do a NAS is because yeah. I just want don't want to add more complexity, something else I have to deal with, something else I have to learn right now into my tech stack. So mm -hmm. that's the way it is for, for the Microsoft stuff. So email, file storage, all of my work stuff is there. Um, you know, I'm a huge fan of OneNote. Uh, I'm still using that extensively for all of my note taking and, and, and that kind of yep. stuff. So plus as a consultant working with 
businesses, most of them are on the Microsoft platform. So I don't like Teams. It's not my favorite thing, um, but that's what they use for all of their meetings and stuff. And so yeah. because I have a Teams account, it just works, right? I don't have to worry about getting special connection in the background or any of that kind of stuff. So um, that was the other one. And it really is cross-platform. You're going to be able to use it. I assume it's available on Android and stuff too, but definitely across Windows, Mac OS, iOS, all that kind of fun stuff. So, yeah, 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 that's, uh, and I'm with you on that, that, and we'll talk about that when we get into the, uh, uh, to the second half of the show. Um, because I would think that would be my, my main alternative, but, uh, I do like Microsoft suite of stuff, uh, suite of things. Uh, I, I think with Google, there is that misconception, right, that it's, that it's cheaper until you start adding on all of these services. And they are services, just like Microsoft, you know, only that they charge you right up front. But people see Gmail and they use things like Google Voice and all of that. Um, and that's free. Even their Excel kind of uh, alternative and their Word kind of alternative and, and you know, their, their uh, text editor or, or word processor or, what, you know, whatever you want to call it. But... That's only just a portion of some of the professional tools you would need, right, to 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 run a company. So you would have to start um, yeah. paying for these monthly services and stuff like that. And yeah, the cost the cost adds up to where, um, and then if there's not a cost associated with it, you got to think of how are they able to do this for free. And Google's business model is to sell you ads to sell your personal information, to share yeah. your personal information between their other, their, their other companies and stuff like that. So, you know, you, you have to know what you're getting into with these things. Is your Gmail information going to be personal? Yeah. Gmail is free because you're the product, not the mail. Yep. Right. <laughs> and so, yeah. And there are some advantages to that. Right. I mean, like right. um, you get more relevant search results or you get more relevant ads when you go do a Google search and that kind of stuff. But yeah. Uh, from yeah. a business standpoint, that just doesn't make sense to me. So, you know, in November, I'll choke when I pay the bill. Um, but, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and wrap that up there. Um, I know we, we, I always attempt to make these things shorter, but it did seem like a shorter one today. Shorter than usual, at least. Uh, next week, Greg, what do we have? I think we well, already gave people a hint. Yeah. I mean, next week... I don't know if we're going to record next week or not. There's Jay and I are still debating that just a little bit because it's uh so the day after Labor Day, we know we've got a big week the week after that. Um so we may not record. So we wanted to give you a heads up. If we right. don't record and drop an episode next week on the 9th, which is a Monday, we'll actually watch the event, come straight to record and drop the show all on that Monday. So just be prepared um, for the week of the event that we'll drop the show on Monday. And uh, so just from a programming note perspective. So if we do record next week, I haven't quite figured out what we're going to do. But um, Jay's leaning towards recording. I'm leaning towards not recording because I've got some afternoon yeah. stuff that's going to really consume me that day. So we'll we'll see. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm OK with either. Uh, actually, too, uh, we'll talk about it offline, but. I think we'll have something for you guys. We uh, we'll have something lined up for you. So more more on that. I don't want to just spring it on you on, during the show. We should have talked about it earlier, but all right, yeah, we'll we'll be okay. So that was all, folks. Uh, stick around for the post show. Like I said, Greg and I we're going to go into an alternate future of of ourselves. This is going to be our Star Trek time travel episode. So, but. Uh, for everyone that's tuning off now or, or just watching this episode, again, thanks for listening. Get in that comment section and let us know uh, any alternatives you think we should have included. Anything that you use, if you use iOS, anything that you use that's not iOS-centric or related outside of the Apple ecosystem, definitely share that, guy, share that with us in the comments. So uh, thanks for listening. Greg, you want to close this? Nope, that's it. Have a great day. Enjoy. All right. See you next week.